Welcome back everybody. Today is the fourth of my five part series testing out unsolicited mail sent to my PO box. Today I've got the $55 Ryder RX by Ace Beam. It's a flashlight that supposedly no ordinary flashlight is a fidget flashlight. Let's see how it held up in today's video. This is the Ryder RX. Came with a note. Let's see what the note says here. It says uh, this is the latest mini EDC flashlight. The Ryder X unique feature however is a mechanical slide which lets you Use the light as a fidget toy. If you're a fan of, of bolt action pens, this may be an unexpectedly fun feature to play around with. This is, a, this is really all we got. A strap, which I probably won't use. It's like some little O-rings. Some microscopic instructions. I might need a microscope to read those and then the flashlight itself. Got a nice looking design on this one. This slides back and forth and if you have it in this position, it can... That must be the fidget feature that he was talking about. Then unscrew this to access the battery. And the battery is right there. It's a rechargeable battery, I believe. Yes, it is. It takes a, that looks like a USB-C port, I believe. So there are five modes, high, mid, low, ultra low, and SOS. The battery looks like it shows 920 milliamp hours. Right, so let me read these instructions over, make sure I know how to use this properly, charge with the battery fully, and then go outside tonight and see how it works. All right, as soon as the sun goes down, I'm gonna be comparing the Ace Beam to three other flashlights I've tried out over the years. All right, on this table, I've got the Tack Light Elite, the Through Night T2, the star of the show, the Ace Beam, and I've got the Aurora A3 by Roby Vaughn. I'm gonna be shining the flashlights on that wall. It's about 25, 30 feet away. And we will compare low, medium, and high and see how they all look. I was gonna do the tack light elite, but I just realized it's not working properly. It only has one mode and then it shuts off. So we here, just to let you know what it looks like, that's the high mode. I think that's high, I'm not even sure. I mean, it's got a very wide beam, but I can't change modes, it only goes on and off. So it looks like it's, it's not working properly. Tack light elite, you're already out of here. So let's compare the Aurora A3 with the Ryder RX. Here are the two lows. Clearly the Ryder RX is brighter on low. And here are the two mediums, looks a lot closer now. Interesting that the Aurora is kind of a bluer tint and the Ryder RX is a little bit yellower tint. Now we have them both on high. Again, pretty close. I would say uh, not a huge difference. I would say they're, they're, they're pretty similar. All right, here's the through night low versus the Ryder RX ultra low. Let me bump the Ryder RX up to regular low. All right, there's the two lows. The Ryder RX low is brighter. All right, here are the two mediums. Pretty close again. The through night T2 has a much wider beam than the, uh, the Ryder RX does, but they're pretty close. I right, hear the two highs. Once again, the, the through night just takes up so much more space. And let's try the uh, Ultra. Well, that's pretty, you can, can barely even see the Ryder RX, very bright. The primary feature that makes this stand out from the rest of them is that, that it has kind of a fidget feature. So you can move this clip, not only back and forth, but up and down, kind of like a ballpoint pen. So if you're the kind of person that likes to fidget with a ballpoint pen, this might actually appeal to you. There's another feature as well. Normally with a flashlight with a tail cap like this, you really can't stand up. It's just gonna, it's gonna fall over. But what you can do is then slide the tail cap up into the unit and then use it in candle mode. So the candle mode is actually kind of a nice feature. That's not something I've seen in a lot of the flashlights I've tested out. All right, so I got two quick durability tests to do. The problem with doing durability tests is if it fails the first one, you can't do the second one. So I'll, I'll, hopefully it survives both of them, but let's head outside and see how it holds up. They say it's impact resistant to one meter, which really isn't that much. One meter that high. That's not, I'm gonna drop it, but I'm not really impressed even at this point. Drop test from one meter. Ooh, and it works. Yay, all right. Now the waterproof rating they show, I think it's supposed to be up to an hour at two meters. I'm gonna put it in this shallow bucket for maybe five minutes. So not much of a test if it's accurate. There it goes. Should I put that on? Maybe put it on, help me put it out of there. It's still working, let's put it on. Let's put it on in there. There we go. A little more visual, good. It does not look like it's bubbling, so I think it's gonna, it's gonna work. And that water doesn't look particularly clean either. This was kind of an old dirty bucket. Extra test on here. I'm gonna come back in five minutes and see if it's still working. All right, let's see what we got here. All right, well, it's actually been about seven minutes. Still going strong. I, I gotta say it did pass the test, so I have to give it credit for that. 
So in the end, the flashlight market's very saturated and it's kind of hard for any one flashlight to stand out. But I do think that the Ryder RX is a perfectly competent flashlight and I like some of the features in there. I like the candle mode. I like the fact that you can use the rechargeable or AA batteries. Now the fidget feature is not something that I would particularly look forward to, but some people out there do like that kind of thing. So if you're someone who's looking for a flashlight and tends to play with those bolt action type pins, this could be a good fit for you. Let us know what you think in the comments below if you've used a flashlight like this. I appreciate you watching and I'll see you next time.